Hey guys, Tony Rowe here, back with another uh, Lee Chess Rapid game. I don't know why it took me so long to say that. My opponent is IHJ, easy enough to say, as opposed to the last 14 names I've had. 1691 Blitz. Okay. I'll just go Knight C3. I think D4 is interesting there, but... Eh. Black at some point can go e5 and maybe punish me for not playing d4, but I'm I'm happy to play those positions as well. I'll just play bishop g2. My goal in this game, don't get into massive time trouble. That's I'm gonna I say that every game. I know that I'm beating the deadest of horses, but but I'm gonna give it a shot. Do have a threat. Knight takes c6. So takes takes. We're gonna reach a pretty well known opening position here after castles yeah and I'm gonna play the main move is queen d3 just getting off this diagonal but I'm gonna play bishop g5 first I've dabbled with this line in the past it's kind of interesting the main idea okay <laughs> uh okay queen Uh, is queen d2 forced? Queen d3, knight e5. Shames my queen and looks to bag a pawn, so probably not that. Uh, hmm. Anything else? It doesn't look like it. Okay, I'm just going to play queen d2. I'm, I, I notice now that queen d2 h6 is possible. and Well, I guess I can go bishop f4, huh? And if he wants my bishop with knight e3, he has to play g5 or e5, both of which are kind of crap moves that you don't necessarily want to play. Okay, so he wants this thing pretty bad. Not super pumped about this development, but I also don't think this can be that bad for me with him having played g5. I mean, he's played g5. He's, just, he's essentially pot committed to this now, I think. It would be weird if he didn't do that. So knight g4, huh? I've never seen that move. Interesting idea, though. <clears throat> kind of greedy, but it doesn't look that bad for, for black. I mean, wow, and he doesn't take it. Queen c7 looks suspicious, allowing knight d5 for free. Knight d5, queen c4, knight e7 has to be good for me. I'm not going to spend too much time on that. I get to go rook c1 or rook f to c1. and I don't understand why you'd play g5 if you're not going to take this thing. So I, I'm just going to go knight d5. I'm not going to think about it that much. Qu queen takes c4 has to be close to suicide. Yeah, but, but if not that, then what? I mean, queen d8. But then maybe I can just go bishop d4. Save this bishop before he can nab it. I'll let him nab it if he wants to go bishop d4, e5, bishop back to e3, knight e3, queen e3. Then his bishop would be very bad. He has pawns on essentially every square he can have it to block in his bishop. And he's got a very weak d5 square. I would be more than happy to play that position. I think white is probably a little bit better there. But yeah, queen c4, I mean, maybe even rook fc1 first. And yeah, it looks it looks dangerous. He, either knight c7 or knight e7 coming. Yeah, so he doesn't want that, perhaps wisely so. Every time I say wisely so, I, I want to crack a Wesley so joke, but then I just realize it's totally lame. Now this. Hmm. That's ugly. This is not the prettiest bishop I've ever seen in my life. Hmm. 
Hmm. I have dreams of trapping this knight somehow. What do I play? C5? Busting the position open. C5, D takes C5, Bishop takes C5. Hitting E7 looks totally unplayable. C5, he probably just has to leave it, but maybe Bishop E6. But maybe I, I can just go Rook FD1 in that case. God. <laughs> there we go. And... I mean... Seems good, no? C5, uh, maybe he can go E6. So if C5, E6, eh, I don't love that as much. I'm like moderately tempted to go F4. It just looks so out of place. Like F4, G takes F4, G takes F4, threatens H3. Trapping the lady. Or f4, g takes f4, knight takes f4, sort of threatens bishop d5 check, and then knight in d6, which looks positionally very comfortable. I, I was also thinking about the somewhat odd-looking b4 here, the idea to go uh, h3, knight e5, f4, Perhaps takes, takes, knight c6, bishop b2, and then I'm threatening b5, which would kick his knight all the way back to the b8 square. Bishop c3, rather. Yeah, but that looks... That, that can't be the right move. But f4 doesn't really have a threat, does it? Maybe something like rook d1. Rook x <laughs> to, d, to d1. I'm not sure which one. Um, I'm just going to go rook fd1. This move seems... Should I go rook a to d1? I'm going to go rook fd1. Given that I, I think I, at some point I want to play c5. So I'm just prepping c5, I think. But yeah, but, uh, yeah I'm not sure. e6 is always going to kind of be in my business. If I play c5, I need to consider that. If he goes bishop e6, I'll probably just go rook a c1. Bishop e6 takes d5 can sometimes kill the play in these variations, but in this case, bishop takes b, b, uh, b d5 check is just a blowout. I mean, it's check, and I take on b7, and... He has, like, massive light squared problems, so that's really a non-issue. So, I, I mean, I'm, I'm much better here, I, I think. I have a very harmonious looking setup. If now c5, e6... Yeah, I just don't think it's it's working yet. C5, E6, Knight C3, D5. Ooh, maybe E4, though. Oh, did I miss that before with C5? Probably. I didn't see that. I thought he was going to be able to close all the lines down, but E4 looks good. Hmm. So c5, d takes c5, b bishop takes c5 is just it's much better for white, probably winning. c5, e6, c5, e6, knight c3, d5, e4, knight c6, perhaps? But that has to be good for white, too. I mean, I'm just opening up all the lines. 
Maybe even bishop takes c6, b takes c6, c takes d6, queen takes d6. I don't know, something like queen c2, queen c3 there. Eh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna worry about it all that much. I don't think e6 is very good. And I think if I if I get to play c takes d6, whichever way he captures, I'm gonna be much better. Black is still, you know, un undeveloped. He's he's weakened his king shelter with this. It makes a lot of sense to try and open up the game. So I've been looking at c5 over and over again. I wonder if here c5 e6. Knight c3, d5, e4. Yeah, I probably missed it last move. That's a shame. Um, I'm just going to take this thing. If queen takes... I'm thinking about rook to c1 with the idea of bishop d5, bishop c5. Hitting the queen and then uncovering two defenders, extra defenders of the knight on d5. And of course, rook eight, queen takes d6, rook a to c1, I'm just threatening bishop c5. So he takes with the pawn, but now he's just got this weakness here forever, so I like that. Um, I'll just go rook a to c1, finish my development, bring the rook to the open file, pretty easy-peasy stuff. At some point, I might want to play knight e3 and, like, threaten b7 and also look to play bishop d5. Trading off this light, his light squared bishop seems uh, very strong in that white has, or black has a bunch of really weak light squares everywhere, and, wow, he somehow fooled me. But isn't this good? This was my just simple threat. Knight c7... Hitting this bishop, hitting the rook. What am I missing? Maybe knight c4 is his idea. Knight c7, knight c4. Hitting my queen, interrupting the defense, but then knight e6, knight d2, knight d8. That has to be winning for me, no? King h8. Knight c7, knight c4, just knight e6 though. Yeah, all right, I'm not gonna think too long. Hope everyone had a good week, it's Friday. I know it's weird to say this, but I look forward to Sunday just because of Game of Thrones. I care about nothing else right now, <laughs> but, but seeing Game of Thrones. Um, hmm. I'm just going to go b3, just stop any piece from getting in, and probably, I, maybe I'll play something like bishop b2, starting to look at this weak d5 pawn. Now f4, maybe? Nah, I don't have to do that. I'm just going to go bishop b2. Hitting this thing. How do I up the pressure after rook d8? Um, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. It is possible to go f4. I'm just not sure I want to go that deep it seems a little excessive um, hmm. I, something like rook c2 is is a very natural move maybe just going rook d to c1 taking over the c file rook c7 into the liver but is there anything better Queen b4. Queen b4, b6. Queen c4, 
queen a5, b6. Seems to hold. Oh, bishop a3. Uh, see, I'm taking too much time here. When anything is good. I'll go rook c2. I mean, I'm, gonna I'm just going to challenge him to find a useful move. What is he honestly going to play at this point? Not not easy. If bishop a3, knight f7, and I don't think I've made a huge amount of progress. <laughs> I'd be tempted there to go back. Okay. Queen f7. What does that do? Allows me to trade light squared bishops. I'm into it. I think he wants to go queen h5. I'm not particularly threatened by that, though. So maybe bishop d5, queen d5, queen h5, then what for white? Hmm. It is possible to play bishop e5, bishop e5, queen e5, d takes e5, rook takes d8 check. I doubt I'll do that, though. Yeah, doesn't make a hell of a lot of sense. Uh, he wants to check, take on b2. If I go rook c7, that is. Uh, isn't f4 good, though? The pin. Uh, yeah, okay. Um. Oh, he's got a check. I'm dumb. Uh. Oh. Uh, all right. <laughs> it's got more complicated. Stupid F4. Uh, I just have to knock it smothered mated or knight f2 mated of any kind yeah that's irritating this still looks okay though if he if he takes with the queen i can go queen d4 and stopping knight f2 check because of queen f2 of course and threatening to trade queens he'd practically have to go back to really <laughs> really sir doesn't hmm. this stupid thing is also lurking am I not just holding it down after bishop d4 though don't get made it Tony bishop d4 knight f2 bishop f2 that doesn't work bishop d4. Practically his only move is rook g8, but then rook c7 is just crushing. Queen h5. Okay, I mean, I always have rook c7 check. This is just killing. Um, okay. We'll play bishop d4. A big, big mistake by my opponent if there's, if there's nothing here, which I don't think there is. I mean... It seems like I have pretty much everything covered, and rook c7 is a massive threat. Yeah. But this, he just has to toss everything in the way. He's losing the house. And we get the, the win. Lucky at the end. I mean, I, I messed it up. I, I missed queen g6. I was just lazy. So let's take a look. This is an unusual second move. It, it's not necessarily bad. It's just, I think, um, it's probably not, not the most optimal move order for black. I mean, if I go d4, black is more or less committed to some kind of a Meroxy bind, right? I mean, knight f6, knight c3, and I'm going e4 next move. So... 
that's not a position that Black is, is normally seeking out. And if you're really interested in... And the only reason I, I guess you'd really play, play this is if you want to go e5, but... You can you can maybe go via this move order, which doesn't commit you, commit you to d6 if if white decides to go d4 here, um, which is generally helpful. Like c takes d4, knight takes d4, and then e5 is actually playable. But there's also like typical four knight stuff with e6, or you can go g6. Um, that allows the bind again, though. Other moves are possible. Even knight f6, knight c3, and then I think maybe, yeah, e6 is probably just uh, more usual going into the two knights. And then I like g3, queen b6, knight d to b5, etc. I don't want to go into huge digression about this second move, but another plan would be to go e3 and d4 here, which is probably pretty good now that black has committed himself to <coughs> d6. The, the main thing is is that, um, for instance, it's like if black wants to follow up with g6 in the game, uh, a common line is knight c6, knight c3, g6, when e3 is actually a little bit dangerous for black, except for the fact that black can go knight f6, d4, takes, takes, and then d5, which, if you're perceptive, transposes to a variation of the Panoff Botfinic attack against the Karo Khan. So this could be reached via e4, c6, d4, d5 takes, takes, c4, knight f6, knight c3, knight c6, knight f3, and then g6. So this is the same position. Uh, but in this case, black will not be able to go d5 in one move. So he, he's lost that option. So if g6, then d4... Bishop g7, maybe, uh, I would think about h3, but I think bishop e2 is quite a bit more popular. And the problem is knight f6 immediately allows d5 when knight e5 is less than optimal. Um, but if not that, then you, you have to go bishop g4, and that gives, uh, most likely will give up the two bishops at some point. White has historically scored pretty good in that variation, so maybe maybe I should have thought of e3, given that d6 already moved the d pawn one time, and ruins black's transposition back to the panov. But I like going g3 and bishop g2 against mostly anything, So, and I have a little bit of familiarity with this position already. So, And like I said, the normal move in this position is queen d3, and it's been played in tons of games. So just removing your queen from, from this diagonal one sort of pseudo threat that black has is to go bishop e6 and now that well i'll just show you so like let's just say i play some not optimal moves bishop e6 then i just waste a move with like a3 just to show you knight d5 is is a threat discovering an attack and also queen takes d5 getting out of the attack is no longer possible and after i move my queen like queen d3 then takes takes totally bungles up my pawn structure and these bishops are very powerful so note of course now if like knight d5 queen d5 gets out of the discovery and wins a piece so but i saw this this move bishop g5 in in one game uh played by jonathan hawkins and i believe it either went h6 bishop d2 or it went e bishop e6 queen d3 Bishop e6 is the most natural move threatening this, and then I think white is well advised to move the queen somewhere. Um, d3 would probably be my choice, and after rook a to c8, something like b3. And, yeah, I mean, white's got a very strong bishop. Maybe at some point this pressure is kind of annoying against the e7 pawn. Rook fd1, rook a to c1, knight d5 is, is the normal way to play. It can be hard for white to drum up winning chances, though. One set of minor pieces is already missing. Knight d5 sort of implies a removal of of a second minor piece. And, you know, a lot of times if the C file opens and there's only one file, there's like massive rook trades down the file. And so white usually has a little bit of pressure here. It's a little bit more pleasant to play white, but sometimes it's it's irritating to try and win. If I find that Hawkins game, though, yeah, here it is versus Quillian. I knew it was a recent game. Or maybe, no, it was versus Harvey. 
Oh, so he's played it more than once. I'm going to have to look at this game, too. I don't think I've seen it yet. I'll post these games. The game versus um, Harvey is pretty instructive, I think. It's like a nice uh, positional grind the first time I saw it, and that, it kind of impressed me. But Knight G4 is actually interesting. It poses some some interesting problems. Queen D3, Knight E5, I think, is not that pleasant. Okay, if I have to go to E4, then, I mean, what the heck is my queen doing on this square? It doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, and like I played in the game, this allows h6, bishop f4, g5, knight here, and then just like in the game, and I think I would have taken this if I was black, and like b, bishop e6, b3, um, maybe a6, so black wants to play rook a to c8 perhaps and go b5, but rook a to c8, maybe at some point the, eh, even rook a to c8 now is possible. Ah, but the, the, the pawn is hanging, so maybe queen d7. Guarding the pawn, rook a to c1, getting out of the pin. I don't feel like white is a ton better in this position with the two bishops. Black's king side is a little bit messed up, but it's not easy for white to exploit that so much. Hmm. So if a6, rook fd1, threatening c5, maybe here. Yeah, I mean, I'm just really reluctant to, like, the knight d5 plan doesn't make as much sense now because it just takes takes and there's just really nothing i mean takes takes and rook c8 or whatever and it's just black is seems very solid ah but that hangs the e-pawn so we can't do that yet bishop f6 then maybe rook c8 hmm. i'll have to look at this one maybe maybe a non-traditional retreat square for my queen is is the best way to play like queen not f4 queen d1 looks kind of dumb if bishop e6, then I sort of have to go knight d5. I can't go b3 because my knight isn't defended. Hmm. But queen e4 looks dumb. But I am attacking the e-pawn in this case. Rook e8. I don't know. I'm not sure about this. If rook a d1, yeah, if bishop f5, I'm always taking on b7, I suppose. But then b2 hangs. So what if rook a d1, bishop f5? Taking on b7, rook b8 looks kind of dicey. Maybe just knight d5 and I'm fine. Yeah, it doesn't feel like a lot if rook e2 is possible. I don't, I don't really love this. I'm going to I'm gonna have to research this a little bit more. I'm, I'm very happy that... Black somehow played this, and then, I, I mean, it, it feels like the only reason you'd ever play knight g4 and this h6 g5 move is to take the two bishops, and then he didn't take it, which is bizarre. Queen c7 is bad, I mean, no doubt. If queen c4, there's literally no way Black is surviving here. Something must, something must win. He's totally undeveloped, his queen is on this awkward square. b3 isn't the move that I would immediately think of. <laughs> but I guess the queen doesn't really have any good squares to go back to. Must go to a6. Oh, yeah, this move is actually really good. If here, then knight c7. And if queen a6, then also knight c7. Queen a3 is the only square. Take on a8, and I'm I'm up a piece after this. He can't guard c7 again, so if, like, bishop e6, then knight c7 saves the piece. So Even more clear than I thought. I was thinking about rook f to c1. But, yeah, in that case... He has a4. But this takes away all the squares except for four squares, which is pretty funny. Not an intuitive tactic, but I didn't really calculate anything. I just assumed queen takes c4 just was awful. Yeah, and now I get to save the bishop. I mean, I don't think... This seems okay. And f6, yeah, I, I'm just... Uh... The problem with f6, it's it's not even like one of those moves that I... Uh, like, is bad if if your opponent finds like a very precise reaction. Sometimes moves are just like they do a very static, you know, detriment to your position. And I don't really have to play precisely to exploit it. I just have to play natural moves. And, you know, you've you've weakened your king. You've weakened this diagonal. You've blocked in this bishop. Um, you know, it doesn't take any, like, special effort for me. I can just still continue to play natural moves and and get a, a much better position. But here I, I wonder about c5 now. I rejected it because of this. And I only looked at here. And I thought just d5. Or like takes takes d5. And, and I wasn't sure 
if I had a ton without with the C5 pawn now, the D5 pawn having essentially walked by my C pawn. I didn't want that. I want to open up the game. And, uh, but maybe here. Ah, but he can take. And my queen isn't protected. I didn't see that either. So in, th in this case, ah, okay. Yeah, so I, I totally missed that. But after rook fd1, I just got lucky that my queen is protected. <laughs> That's funny. And now, now c5 seems legitimately very strong. If e6, knight c3, here, e4. This is just awful. I mean, he must take, essentially, taking his forced, and... <laughs> yeah, I can take here first, and takes d2, takes here, takes here. Um, and this is obviously just positionally... I, strategically, this is completely lost for black. He's got the worst bishop in history, um, and actually he can't develop the bishop at d7. So, probably rook a to d1 to d8. Pinning this bishop is just going to be the end of the game, essentially. Put a rook on d8, play knight d6, and yeah. Man, I would have loved to have gotten this position in the game. Very pretty. <clears throat> and if, if here takes in like rook f7 or rook e8... It's just very bad. Probably even 97 is yeah still possible because takes, takes. So yeah, actually this is just a total blowout. Worse blowout than I thought because I didn't really even think this far. Both both of these moves lose to Knight Discovery, so you're just totally dead. I mean here, probably even just takes here is dead winning. <laughs> yeah. So Bishop E6, what my opponent played, might be the most playable move, but after C takes D6, C takes D6... Just rook a to c1. Very unpleasant for black. Very bad pawn structure. Weaker king. He's got this bad bishop. My light squared bishop is a monster. This d6 pawn is going to turn out to be pretty weak. I really want to go knight e3 and bishop d5, but my opponent actually stopped it by going king h8. But king h8, okay, knight c7 is, is just game over. The only thing I had to calculate is whether or not knight c4 was good, but knight e6 is uh, an extremely straightforward win. Just trades and i'm i'm up a bishop so yeah after this i mean the game is pretty much over b3 just stopping all this nonsense f5 probably i didn't play the most precise here but not terrible either bishop b2 just opening up the d file maybe bishop a3 is on the cards rook c2 and then bishop d5. So I get to trade off some pieces. That's always nice. Yeah, and here I play the really crummy f4. I mean, this move is not, not like losing or anything. It's just like, why weaken your king like that? I, I just was lazy. I assumed this one. I didn't see that this there was this unpinning queen g6 at the end. Probably anything. Here is quite good, but... But after this, I mean, king h7 makes no sense. Just bishop d4 must take and if, if he wants to keep the g file open he has to take this way but then queen d4 seems seems technically just very easily winning okay he can go rook g8 takes takes and renew this threat of knight f2 but yeah i can go e4 or or e3 and if he takes on e3 which looks like a fork i have a check so i mean this is just yeah rook c7 is just game over so it really fell apart very quick for black. Shouldn't have, but it did. And I know I have some homework to do. I need to investigate this knight g4 idea and <laughs> find a good square for my queen. But, um... Yeah, what else is there to say? I mean, be consistent with your ideas. I think, you know, if, if you play to nab this bishop and you want to take this bishop, then take the bishop. Black should have just snapped that thing off immediately. Played the, you know, thematic bishop e6, bishop b3, and then protected the b-pawn somehow, and he probably would have been pretty much equal. I, I don't think black has very many problems here. Um, yeah, and then, you know, just f6 is, you know, Ben Feingold, don't touch your f-pawn, the John Bartholomew, forget about it usually applies especially here f6 doesn't really make a lot of sense i get that black didn't want to trade the bishops but okay i mean yeah this bishop is good but the bishop after you play f6 is a bishop that you you wish you would have traded off so um a little bit Ill illogical there 
Okay. Well, it's Friday. Uh, I'm sure because I have the weekend to myself that I will be back with more rapid games uh, and an instructional video. Hopefully I'll have... I have an instructional video planned. Hopefully I'll get it out this weekend. I think I'll have the time. Sorry for the relative lull in content, guys. Um, busy week, and I've also just been sort of playing like crap. So <laughs> um, um, I didn't want to film film me playing like a you know sack of garbage and and um, that's not enjoyable for anyone. So I just took a little break from recording, a little break from playing serious stuff, and and I'm back. I've played some good games today. Hopefully uh, a couple more. Uh, have a good Friday guys, and, uh, I'll be back with more chess.